Tako Apao. This is Kaio Kua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation, bringing you another segment of Voice of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. And we're uh, back on Maui again. We seem to be attracted here quite frequently. And we're very pleased to have with us uh, Kumu uh, Kamakaeu Williams, who uh, we just had the pleasure of watching uh, perform with his halau. Kamakaeu, aloha. Aloha. We're uh, very happy to be with you and uh, for you to be here again. Not, this makes how many years that you've been here at the Oh, we've been here maybe seven times. Seven. seven there. My goodness. Uh, we should drop back and give a little background on, uh, you know, who Kamakaeu is uh, and how you got to be where you are and what you, act, what you do here on, on Maui in addition to, uh, you know, the performances such as this one. Because I know there's an awful lot more that you do within the community and education, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, I'm a third grade teacher in the Hawaiian Language Immersion Program. Right. Um, which, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a, a public school educational program that where the curriculum is taught through the Hawaiian language. So the students are being um, taught in the Hawaiian language and they grow up being bilingual speakers. I've taught for maybe 18 years now. When I first started teaching, um, I was a fourth grade teacher, and um, in the fourth grade, the social studies curriculum focuses on Hawaiian history. And so I thought, what better way to teach the history of Hawaii than through hula, chants, and, mm -hmm. and the mele. Mm -hmm. And so I would do that in my curriculum. And P.E. Mauna, who works here at the hotel, at Ritz-Carlton Hotel, um, her son was in one of my earlier classes, and so she knew what I was doing. And so she asked me um, one year to bring my fourth grade students up to the Ritz Carlton to dance at the Celebration of Arts. Uh, this was, I believe, 1999. Mm -hmm. And so I was a little bit nervous because, you know, this was, I was only a young man, third year teaching, teaching li little kids and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I called on my kumuhula. My kumuhula is um, Victoria Ho Takamine on the island of Oahu. Mm -hmm. And so I called her up and I asked her, Kumu, you know, I was asked to do this presentation, 45 minute hula pre presentation at the Celebration of the Arts. Uh, would it be okay for me to do it? And she said, of course, and actually I'll come down as well to watch and support you. And so, kind of a lot of pressure there, but I, I really, really uh, enjoyed the fact that she was um, going to be coming down. And, oh, so, and, so, and so encouraging too, huh? Yes, yes, it yep. made me feel good that she, she supported me in that way. And then, so at that performance, um, my Kumu would told me after the performance that she was very proud and not only that her kumu and Timaiki was proud as well and that I should start a, a class outside of my classroom uh, because many of the kids it would be a shame for the kids that don't have hula training to mm -hmm. come through my class and then after my class not really have any more of it so yeah. because of celebration of the arts I was actually able to start this halal that I am doing today so as opposed to just having a class that moves on at the every time the semester is over, the end of the school year, yeah. then you wind up um, actually having a halal of your own. Yeah, so now so I have a halal of my own. Um, when I first started, I was it was just me, a single man, doing this, um, mm -hmm. teaching keiki. But I was very, very fortunate to be able to marry one of my hula sisters, mm -hmm. Kaula William. After getting married to her, she knew what I was doing, um, teaching hula through the Hawaiian language because we right. kept the the. The, the system of the, the immersion teaching style in the halau. Mm -hmm. And so even though she only had two years of Hawaiian in, um, at UH Manoa, she came aboard, started teaching hula through the Hawaiian language, and now she is a very, very good um, uh, speaker as well. And she, so we co-teach this halau. Um, and in the year 2007, I believe it was, um, both her and I, Uniki, as uh, Ho'opa'a um, under Vicky Ho Takamine. So it mm -hmm. kind of gave us a little bit more um, uh, backing in what we do um, right. in, in, in this halal. So you folks actually probably met in on Oahu then? Yeah, originally we, we both danced for Auntie Vicky uh, on Oahu uh, for right. Puali'i Ilima. And so that's where we first met. Mm -hmm. I moved away um, to here to Maui to start my teaching career. Mm -hmm. she, she was still on Oahu. Right. When she graduated, she went to um, the Big Island to do her um, her teaching, mm -hmm. and then both of us wanted to continue teaching with uh, learning hula under Vicky Ho Takamine, and we heard that she had a, a halau on Kauai where, mm -hmm. where right. uh, your wife dances, right. and 
So we heard that she did that once a month. She flew over to Kauai mm -hmm. to teach her Halawa and Kauai. So mm -hmm. I first I asked um, Kumu Vicky if, she, if I could fly over from Maui to Kauai and still dance with her. Sure. She said sure. And then when Kaula, and back when we were both were single, found out that I was doing that, mm -hmm. she wanted to do that too. Uh -huh. And so she asked Kumu if she could fly over to um, mm -hmm. Kauai to dance with her. And right. then at that first class that both of us were at, yeah. she said that she'd pick me up. And then so I would I went. I flew to Kauai, she picked me up. Um, because your wife has had family. Oh, yeah, my wife from is Kauai, from yeah, Kauai. Yeah, from Kauai. Kauai. Right. And so, just so happened that um, Kumu's plane was late, like three hours late. So we were just waiting in the car <laughs> and talking story and yeah. finding out that we were both were single. And then yeah. we started the courtship from there. And then that's kind of how we, we, decide, we came together. So yeah. we got a lot to Kumu in that. Time. Well, that's <laughs> it. It's very interesting. So, your, your halal. Uh, genealogy is uh, through Auntie Mikey and yes, Auntie Mikey, uh, yeah. Kuma Victoria. Yes. And then your your job, your your teaching career brought you here. Yes, yes, yes. And it's uh, it's Hawaiian immersion. Is it still Hawaiian immersion? Yes, it's a Hawaiian immersion um, right. program. Yeah. So um, so right now I'm teaching I'm teaching in the third grade, and so yeah, all, the whole entire curriculum math, social studies, science, language arts, art, mm -hmm. PE, everything is taught in the Hawaiian language. Right. Um, and by the time they get to me at third grade, you know they're they're speaking fluently, and they speak both languages, English and Hawaiian. Right. Um, because at home they're speaking most of the time they're speaking English, um, but in the classroom environment um, they're speaking in Hawaiian, and that's one of them another reason. Why why we wanted to do this halal is mm -hmm. to give the students another environment of being enriched in Hawaiian language yeah, because Hawaiian if medium, it's only yeah. in the classroom then it's like classroom language it's right. a little bit different right so you know that's one other thing that we're proud of with this halal is that we offer another way for the t students to learn through mm -hmm. the Hawaiian language in a you know in a cultural event so cultural practice. so you, you probably still have some children within the uh, formal DOE contact to pass through and move on but then you have your halal and they probably overlap huh? yes they overlap a lot yeah so most of my students are either former students of mine current students of mine or will be future students most mm -hmm. of the students are in the hawaiian immersion program however we are open to other people who are mm -hmm. not in the hawaiian immersion program mm -hmm. if they want to learn hula through the hawaiian language they are welcome to come and we yeah. have a few students that are on the English side of the Paia school where I'm at right um, and they, they heard about what we're doing and they wanted to do it so they come in even though they don't speak Hawaiian right. they listen yeah. they pay attention and in yeah. hula since in, since hula is a dance um, activity it's easier to follow because right. you know you're you're, you're 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 mimicking the motions and things like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and so and also we started a makua class just last year um, and most of the makua don't speak Hawaiian, uh -huh. but they have to listen, be quiet, listen, follow the motions, and, and learn, learn the hula that way. So well, it, that. Uh, makua would uh, designate their the parents. Their, the parents, but are they necessarily parents of the younger? It started that in way. Some case, it yeah. started that way because when I first started the hula, it, was just, thing, oh, it uh -huh. was just the keiki. Yeah? So right. it, but the parents would always ask me, oh, can't we do a class for uh -huh. Makua? Can't we do a class for the parents? And oh, after my wife came aboard, we decided, okay, let's try it. And so uh, about half of them are Makua, are, are parents of keiki that are in the hula, mm -hmm. and then others are friends of those people that kind ah. of heard about it and wanted to do it as well. Yeah. And so we have a mix in there. So it still is an Ohana kind Yeah, it's very, very Ohana. What is your evaluation of the uh, Hawaiian Immersion uh, program? It, it has, uh, it's completed. Oh well, yes, we've been in existence one, for. Kindergarten to 12. Yeah, so it's, the so program had goes from kindergarten through 12th grade. We've had many, many graduating classes already. Right. Um, and many of the students um, go on to college. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and flourish in their careers and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. We are a public school educational program, so right. you know, we, we welcome all that come into the program. Right. Um, you don't have to be a Hawaiian to be in this program, right. although most of them are. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, the, the, the kids do really, really well. We emphasize that in our program. So you really see it, because I also taught high school for a couple of years, and you could see the differences between the high school students on the English side and the high school students on the Hawaiian immersion side. The uh, immersion kids were just grounded in their culture, so right. they took care of each other. They were yeah. close to yeah. family, and they, you know, as a uh, parent seeing that, you know, you feel a little bit 
better because you feel your 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 kids are safe because you have that extended family right. within that program. Yeah. So that's something that we we really like. Well, you know, I think that's what's missing throughout a lot of the world, especially where you have, uh, you know, migrations of of people from all over who come in. Is that some a lot of them get removed from their their uh, history and. Here we are in Hawaii. What better place to uh, emphasize yes. the culture and the, the history, of yes. you know, and all the values of uh, mm -hmm. of Hawaii? So it's uh, to me, uh, I think, very, very interesting. The language, uh, having been delegalized for so long, yes, yes, uh, yes. you know, what was it, 1898, when it actually was outlawed? Yeah, yeah. And only back in what seventy something, nineteen seventy something, yes, and uh, that's, actually that's being one of officially the reasons, recognized. That's one of the reasons why we started this Hawaiian Immersion Program because it came to a point where Hawaiian was going to be extinct thirty years ago, about that right. this movement started. Right. Where we wanted to ensure that the future of the Hawaiian language would be okay, and and through this type of schooling, we would build from the keiki up. Because mm -hmm. most of the speakers at that time, about thirty years ago, were mostly kupuna, mostly right. elderly people that. Right. Who knows how many more years they had left and right. so we were very very worried that the hawaiian language would eventually become extinct and so mm -hmm. the, this program was founded and now you see m these children are you know like we talked about earlier they're graduating right and going on to the the business world and they're hawaiian speakers yes and so now the language is growing you have different programs on tv you have all kinds of activities mm -hmm. in the hawaiian language now and it, mm -hmm. it's it's really truly great to see yeah it's a living yeah, language it's a living language yes so yeah. that's we still have more to grow but you know this uh it, it's looking looking right well i know maui had uh, like so many of the islands has had pockets of uh hawaiians who were still uh speaking to some extent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hawaiian yes, yes yes and then then you have the academic hawaiian yeah yeah, yeah which yeah. comes out of higher education mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh and i know there are some clashes sometimes or some yes, yes. Uh, interact uh, some discussions between the two the two approaches but the main thing is that uh, if the language doesn't survive at all yeah yeah you know, it, yes, yes. if it's not recorded and taught mm -hmm. and passed on even if it's in a uh, you know not a total first language uh, situation mm -hmm. You yeah. know, we'll, we'll take that. Yes, and, and languages always evolve too throughout through time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are so many new things in society today that was never in, not in existence in, in, exactly. the, in the olden days. So yeah. you have to come up with lots of new vocabulary, right. Right. new ways of th saying things and stuff like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. we are evolving. Yeah. We would like to stick true to the way the kupuna ta uh, spoke in the, in the olden right. times. But at the same time, we have to be able to be aware of the new things, the new technology, new stuff out here. Yeah, in, in well, society. language and culture evolve yes but i think it's great to be able to appreciate and celebrate appreciate and celebrate the, you know the, the ancient yes. things yes absolutely. and at the same time adapt yes new things i had a a french teacher who uh, belonged to alliance francaise which actually it's kind of a worldwide society that promotes uh franco mm -hmm. francophile you know the french culture and so forth and uh, she was from France, and I met her in uh, Louisiana, where she was teaching, you know, as a first, uh, French as a first language. And she told uh, one interesting experience when she'd gone up to a conference in uh, Canada, and she started hearing some of the languages they were speaking there, and she, she didn't relate mm -hmm. to a lot of the vocabulary. And she went back home and she talked to her mother in, Fr in France, talked to her mother and her grandmother. And they recalled those terms that she was unfamiliar with, mm -hmm. but they had gone out of fashion uh -huh. and weren't used. So yeah. the French that was being spoken in Canada was like in a time warp, <laughs> whereas in France and elsewhere in the world, uh, the mean? language had, had evolved, evolved or progressed or moved on. Yeah. So your teaching has been primarily on Maui? Y yes, I taught one year on Oahu. I actually did my I, schooling on Oahu. So I went to UH <coughs> right. Manoa, I graduated there. I did my student teaching on Oahu right. at Puohala Elementary in the Hawaiian Immersion Program. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I was a, 
a boy in a, a family that where my mom took really good care of me and I thought that if I didn't move away from home yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would still be a, a mama's boy <laughs> still <laughs> I, be wanted, there, huh? I wanted to be on my own and, yeah. and be independent and yeah. so I forced myself to okay let's go to another island where I don't really know yeah. anybody and, and set my group, roots here and so that's really the main reason why I moved to Maui is so to, have you been in Paia uh, mostly? And, uh, yes well I, I moved around I've taught most of my career at Paia School Elementary on the north side of this mm-hmm. island right. but I also helped out on the west side at the uh, Princess Nahi Ena Elementary School so that's a Hawaiian right. immersion program as well right. um, and I also uh, tried a couple years up at the high school at, uh, at Keikaolike High School in the Hawaiian immersion program mm-hmm. I, 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 mm-hmm. I, and I was happy to do that because I really understood that I'm better suited in the elementary um, school right. program so right. I really and I came so I came back to Paia School and most well of the, the early time. grades are really the the ones that are so rewarding because yeah, uh, they, they, they you know you the, dearly, they're just yeah. wide open the lights are on yeah, and they're just all they're eager to learn eager to learn and then yeah, they start to have these true. weird shifts as they get older yeah. and, and <laughs> you can't really can't just uh, yeah, but yeah. you know kiss them off but <laughs> my goodness it's tough having to deal with uh, you know growing older young adults and mm-hmm. As they get further up but yeah. catching them young i think is a yeah. is a is a real secret so, in, in school, your major was? Uh, I got my bachelor's in Hawaiian studies, yeah. and then I got a, a professional diploma, which is equivalent to a master's um, in uh, elementary education. Education? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, I, I, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Right. And so, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, you have a prerequisite of before you get into the College of Ed, you have to take a Hawaiian class, any kind right. of Hawaiian class. Right. So, I just decided to take a language 101. I was taking Japanese right. as a child and uh-huh. I just never could grasp it very well. Mm-hmm. Um, but when I jumped into that 101 Hawaiian language class, it was, it was eye opening. It, yeah. it was fun. You know, they encouraged using the language. Mm-hmm. Um, they tied it to my pigeon, which, you know, as a local boy, I talk a lot of pigeon and the structure of it's pigeon same, yeah. and Hawaiian, it, right. a lot of it comes from the ho- structure of Hawaiian. Right. And so once I saw that, I was like, wow, I can use <laughs> pigeon in a positive way. <laughs> so, yeah. And so I, I just loved it. And I wanted to take more language, more language. And that's from the language class. Yeah. Classes at UH Manoa, I learned about the Hawaiian Immersion Program. Mm-hmm. And then they, at that time, they needed teachers. They really yeah. needed teachers. Yeah. And so they offered to pay for my post-bachelorate classes. Cool. In to become an immersion teacher so uh-huh. yeah I would that's that's how I got to the Hawaiian immersion program I mm-hmm. didn't speak Hawaiian as a child mm-hmm. I learned it at college from one-on-one on up yeah. so you know those people that would still want to learn the language as adults yeah it can happen <laughs> it can happen there's still hope <laughs> yeah there's still hope I know in a lot of instances uh, the teaching style is a little bit different from mm-hmm. Western teaching style yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, you know I think it's uh, so promising when you see the young people and uh, the the way they just uh, hook on to the language and the culture. Mm-hmm, yeah. uh, it, uh, it gives them that uh, depth yeah, that yeah. a lot of people don't yeah, have. If you, yeah, if you know yeah. the language, you're going to know more about the culture. Yeah, yeah, and you can't really have a culture without the language. So, well, I think that's a, very, very I think that's why a lot of people, visitors from elsewhere, come here because this is a place that has its own unique history, its own mm-hmm. unique people. Mm-hmm. It's language and I think we're more uh, you know as a as a people uh, more uniting around that now yeah, yeah. it's just like for so many decades I think everyone was celebrating you know the melting pot approach and mm-hmm. uh, all of these countries that had influxes of visitors from everywhere in the world uh, now a lot of those are starting to recognize that they have valuable heritage you know, yeah. from their homeland. Yeah, yeah. And we're lucky enough to be here. Yeah, That's, yes, that's yes. pretty fantastic. Yeah. And now my, my oldest daughter is five years old, and also she's going through the Hawaiian Immersion Program as we speak. So mm-hmm. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty... Well, that's a pretty, pretty good validation, huh? Yeah. The pro- you must have a good faith in the, in the process. Yeah. You've been teaching here long enough. You've had some people graduate... Yes, from, yes. I've had, from yes. high school. Yes. And do you have any feel? Do you keep track of any of them? Or are they pretty much... Keep no, going yeah. other than the Halau um, members well, and so forth. 
Well, thank goodness for uh, social media like Facebook and things like that. Yeah, I you stay in my touch. former students are friends, to, and we stay in touch through that. Yeah. And it's, it's good to see the things that the, my former students are doing. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, the thing about it, like you, like we talked about earlier, we're always such a tight ohana. So right. anytime we see each other, yeah. it's all you know, hug and yeah. how you doing, how's yeah. your family, and it, it's, yeah. it's 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 automatic. I mean, it doesn't matter what they're doing. They, we we see each other. Oh, we stop. We say, hey, hello, yeah. how you doing? And things like yeah. that. Yeah. And it's 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 a really really good feeling to have that and yeah, but, but a lot of people uh, <coughs> a lot of people go up through high school and well, many of them go away for, for yeah, college yeah, 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 yeah. and I think more than used to be the case they're coming back mm -hmm. after yeah. completing their education where it used yeah. to be you came back yeah. when after you retired <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean you made your life elsewhere uh -huh. but I think there's mm -hmm. excitement here for people to uh, yeah. return you see patterns do you see students of yours uh, developing all kinds of interests, or are they? Does your impact on them kind of channel them in a direction? Do you think? Uh, I think that the, the, because we emphasize the the value system, at least mm -hmm. that part of it is, is strong within them. Their respect for elders, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of the aina and, mm -hmm. and, and taking and being uh, res uh, respectful to others. Mm -hmm. I think that carries well with them in whatever, whatever career they, they decide to go. Yeah. Because yeah. you're, you know, today's society, you, you have to work with people a lot of the times, and and having those kind of skills right. um, is very very important. And so I think, yeah, our, our kids have an advantage in that because they mm -hmm. they understand who they are mm -hmm. and who their their close friends are and how to relate to other people yeah. and how to treat other people and so yeah yeah, I, 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 more, yeah the students that I've kept in touch with they're all on mm -hmm. a, a good path what, whatever they, even if they're they just start a family and, and and they're taking care of their kids I mean they're doing wonderful things and, yeah and yeah. so it's really good to see that well and I know the one of the things that there's always uh, I mean you can be anywhere and you can spot someone who has been exposed to a halal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can just spot them. You know? <laughs> it's kind of like they've been through finishing school. You yeah, know, they're yeah. poised, yeah. they're comfortable, they're, they're sensitive to other people, mm -hmm. uh, they're disciplined, mm -hmm. all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's, uh, it's like a lifelong finishing school. Yeah. So it's, it's tremendous. I encourage you to keep up the great work. Thank you very much. And you're so lucky to have um, a life's partner who is just integral to yeah. it. You yeah, really are. Yeah, we're very, very lucky to have my wife. Along so we just say, keep right. up the good work, and thank, thank you. you for being with us. Oh, no Mahalo, Nuna. Oh, yo. And we hope to see you again probably next year next here, year, if not before. The ice. We'll be here again, yes. For those of you at home, uh, we appreciate your tuning in to Voices of Truth, one on one with Hawaii's future. I'm Kai Opua, five for the Kawani Foundation. Mahalo, Nui. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.